Thank you, Lee. Um, morning, everybody. Um, we're talking about photos and surveying in the Brisbane City Council. Um, I'm with uh, the survey department. I'm a senior engineering surveyor there. They assure me that's not a um, ageist title, but uh, <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced sometimes. Okay, the first photo that I'd like to show you is one of the um, triangulation of the survey at Kangaroo Point for the Story Bridge. Um, for a bit of trivia in there, the lead designer on that was a bloke called Bradfield who actually built or was the lead designer on the Sydney Harbour Bridge as well. Um, so that's a bit of trivia you can take away with yourself. No, I'm not really going to go through a whole lot of photos about, you know, surveying in Brisbane City Council. It's not that interesting, actually. But what I'm going to talk about is um, enriching your 12D project with digital images. This has been on the go for quite a while. I actually, um, at the last conference down in the survey area, we unleashed or demonstrated an earlier version of this. Um, the big thing to mention about this, even though we're talking about surveying, it's not limited to surveying. The designers can use this application. It can be used by your flood modelers who want to take photos of sections or drainage structures or anything like that. And what we're doing is we're just associating digital images with a location in your job so that you can just click on that and view your image. Okay, why include photos? Well, a picture's worth a thousand words, they say. It's an idea that's been around for a long time. If you go through 12D, this concept shows up. It's in the survey data reduction function. Surveyors can attach photos through that if they like. You've been able to create plan images from JPEG files. This is a really neat application, actually. You just throw out a whole lot of JPEG files that have the um, GPS locations in the EXIF information, and it goes through and figures out where they are in the world and puts them in your 12D project. Um, there's a whole lot of CAD image manipulation stuff floating around in 12D. I don't know how many people have used that. Um, you can even include URLs in your vertices on your super strings. I don't know how many people know that. It's a little bit difficult to get to, but if you see it is a URL you can actually attach there. Okay. Why? Um, there's aerial images. Everybody uses aerial images now. That gives them that extra bit of information that they want. How many times do you go around a design office and they've got their design on one screen and they're looking at street view on the other screen? And just to give them that little bit extra information they want. How many places have folders of photos that when you go and look at them, there's photos of pits, there's photos down pits, but in two weeks nobody knows where those photos were actually taken. And the driver for us was, we used to go out when we were surveying signs, we'd go out and we'd, do, um, we'd locate the sign and then we'd try and attribute it up. Uh, we had a whole host of attributes and invariably they failed. If you see that image on the right where you've got the clear ways, parking, no standing, all those sorts of things, trying to describe that as attributes is near impossible. Um, also, these... Previous versions of these macros are buried away in 12D at the moment, and the thinking was with ADAC. The surveyor will go out and locate something, but surveyors don't necessarily know what all this stuff is. There's somebody back in the office who can extract that information from the photo and complete the ADAC attributes. So why didn't we use the 12D tools? Uh, the survey data reduction relies on the synchronised time of photo and pickup which meant the photo had to be taken when the point was surveyed. And it needed to be a surveyed point for there to be a photo. Now, that didn't really work in with the workflow, you know, being synchronised. It's not because surveyors don't know their right from their left. It's that when you survey the point, you're not actually near that point to take the photo. With um, remote technologies and all the rest of it, you have to walk up to it at a later time. Um, photos as plan images in 12D. They are a little bit uh, cumbersome to create. You've got to sometimes rename your files. That's a bit of a pain. They obscure your data and they slow down your redraws substantially. And the vertex URLs, similar story. And to actually view something through that URL, that's the, um, your 
do a string inquire, pick it, right button, walk right, select image, and that's how you can view your image. It works, but it's a bit cumbersome if you try and look at lots of them. Okay, so what we needed. Now, this makes it sound like we knew what we were doing, but we didn't at the time. This took a few iterations to get where we are. We needed to give the photographer the flexibility to do their workflows, run it how they did, which meant they could take the photos when convenient and um, take the photos with any device. Now you can do them with your total stations, your total station controller, your phone, and some people are even using cameras to take photos. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other thing was you needed to easily associate the photo with a location in the project. Now, as far as they can do this with, through a point number, by as, um, which is reasonably easy, and um, or some other way. Not everybody, surveyors are about the only people in the world who value their point numbers. And the other thing was we needed to attach photos just in the project to something that wasn't actually a point existing in the project. And we wanted to keep the native image names. We didn't want to change them. That's If anybody starts change, bulk changing names, it becomes a pain. And we wanted to easily and quickly display these photos and not be too intrusive into 12D. And as it turned out, we have to handle many photos. We thought a project might have, you know, big one would be 20, 30 photos. What it turns out is a standard survey project now, we're getting 200 plus photos on a, on a job, which um, raises issues with our IT people about storage and all sorts of things. Anyway, so the solution. We came up with um, a suite of macros and basically one of them is uh, tells 12D where the photos are stored we have three photos that are used to attach, we call it attach, the image or the photo um, to a point in 12D. And we've got one macro to view the photos. And then we have another one here, which is to audit them. We're now making a requirement that certain points are photographed. We then have to, you know, if you're saying you've got to um, photograph something, we then have to have a system to see that those points have actually been photographed. That's under development and I won't be talking about that today. <laughs> okay, and the other thing which is very important in this is your image viewer. Now, um, I've mentioned two there. There's um, Earth and View, which is the one we use as preference. It's got a very small footprint and it's very fast. Um, it's free for non-commercial use, but they want a small reg registration um, for commercial use and a similar one is XN view. <coughs> um, the big advantage of these and I'll mention it later is you can only have, they can set them up so that they only appear once on your screen. A lot of the Microsoft offerings every time you open a photo it's left sitting on your screen. Okay and the system requirements within 12D obviously you want 12D, our image viewer, you set your file associations up so that your selected image viewer will open them. You're using the one of those image viewers, set it to one instance, and dual monitors are highly desirable. As you can see there, you can have your project on one side and your images appearing on the other side. Um, within 12D, uh, the photos are attached to a, to a vertex, which is created through this process. Uh, the, and at the moment, we lock that name, the string name to GN Photo, and it goes into a model called Photo, and you can attach multiple photos to the one point. Um, photo image file names must be unique. That's not really a problem if you're setting your device so it uses your date, time in your, in your image name. Um, photos can be added at any time, so you can go out and do them today and you can come back in a week's time when something's changed, take a photo of it again and attach it to the same point if you like. Or multiple people can go out and add photos into the project, the surveyors can go out and do theirs, the designers can go out and do theirs. Um, what became apparent after time is how you manage these files, how you look after them. This is just basically housekeeping. Well, initially we were only allowing the photos to be kept in that images folder but over time we've developed it now so that you can keep them in subfolders and it'll find 
photos in all those subfolders. So if you're dealing with, you know, 200 photos at a time, it's handy to have them manage them on your disk by splitting them up. We operate this through um, a toolbar and user menus, um, just for convenience sake. Okay, the first, first macro is we call it image location set, and this is the one that just goes through and tells 12D where the photos are stored. What it means is that the surveyors can go through and they'll do theirs and have the photos set somewhere. The designer, they can use those photos from the same location um, so that you're not copying your photos round about. Um, just there for attaching, you can only use a single folder just to minimise the number of images it's got to search through. And for viewing, you can use the, the parent folder and it'll find everything underneath. Okay. The next one is, um, so basically all that one does is set it up and then set some project attributes so that these other macros know where to go looking for the images. Um, the image attach, this is one that uses the embedded point numbers from surveyors. There's nothing particularly spectacular to see there. You just run this, you select your data source and it goes through, looks for the matching point number and creates a photo point, which we'll do next time. The image place last is an interesting one. We're using 12D field. And if people have used tablets in the field, it's a pain if you've got to touch buttons and all the rest of it. So our standard attaching one was not that successful. So what all this one does is you use the camera in the tablet, take your photo of whatever it is, hit the select image location, pick the point in 12D, and it can be just 12D on a tablet running in the field, it doesn't have to be 12D field and it attaches the last image taken to that point. Um, image place. Now this is the one that you can use if you just go out and you're taking your photos and you want to attach them. So it's going to look in the folder by set by image location set. Okay, so we're starting there. When you run the macro, it goes through and it, it finds the first photo in the list. You pick that and it's just doing a bit of housekeeping there to tidy it up. It gives you the name of the photo and things like that, and you say that's a control point. It goes there, you pick and select, that's fine. The next one's a traffic control pit, we'll put that there. Traffic control pit, we'll put that there. This is actually real time when I was doing it the other night. <coughs> um, oh, I got tired of that and I went looking for, these are just general context photos that are just being attached to a general location, middle of the intersection what it looks like across pedestrian crossing, you stick that one there. Oh, intersection again, go back and attach that to the same point again. This one's up there. Another one in the pedestrian crossing. And I thought, no, I really, what I'm looking for is one that I know the name of, so I change it to sort by name. Goes down, finds the one that I was looking for, which is that sign and I want to put it on that sign over there. So we lock it on there, and it's gone on to the next photo, which is the PSM after it. And basically all that does is that sets those image names as vertex, attrib vertex attributes on the, on the photo points. So then you want to view your images. Now this, um, this allows you to go through once you've attached them and anybody to come and look at them. You can step through them or you can um, pick a photo point and it will highlight the current photo point on the image that you're viewing here. Okay, so we fired that up. Can we have fired that up? Yeah, and now it's just stepping through there next and it's picking through those images as we placed them before. So we just go forward, forward, forward. You say, no, no, I really, oh yes, we're still going. Board, that's just demonstrating that there's the two images on the one point there, across to that one. Then I'll go, no, no, I really wanted to look at that one there. I know there's a photo point there, I'll look at that. So we're back there. And then we step backwards through them just to demonstrate that it goes backwards as well. When that actually starts up, it generates a list of your photos in the background and there's a couple of files in there that gives you a list of points that don't have photos on them and photos that don't have points at them. Okay, so what have we found out of all this? What 
we did find out is that we're generating a lot more photos and images than we first thought, um, and we have to manage those things. They are proving to be incredibly useful um, to the extent that we did have a, a list of things that we wanted photos taken of. We're now expanding that list um, to... Co initially, it was all our any non-defined codes or unknown services. We're now expanding that to um, include pits and power poles and um, all sorts of things. Um, and it's been very useful in the auditing of jobs. You can actually go through now and see that everything's been picked up when uh, after the survey's been finished. Um, and actually one of our um, surveyors has found it very useful at the end of the survey job after he's done all his measurements, he'll walk around and take his photos then and he just gets a double check that he has picked up everything on the way through. Um, what we're looking at in the future is less restrictive uh, model and string names. We're probably looking at model names, something like photo, date, photo, date, photo, date sort of thing. But if there was a way that we could just combine all those in some way, that would be really, really good. Um, with this um, philosophy, we can attach anything. We can attach videos, audio, spreadsheets, text files, PDFs, anything in theory. We'd like to explore that one a bit better. Um, walking along a string, and as you go down a curb line or something, it just flicks along and shows you every photo within five metres of that string. Um, seeing initially we were to do this to limit the, um, our attributing in the field on signs, we now have supposed to develop a macro that, so that the designers can go through and instead of saying it's a stop sign, they'll put it's a R1 or whatever they, the code is for those things. And um, the audit on mandatory photo locations has yet to be completed. So thank you. Thanks, Brad.